How's that? Can you hear me? Ah, okay. Very sorry. My apologies. Welcome one and all and good to be uh, with you again. Hope everyone is well. And thank you, David, for the clips. Thank you very much for the, um, the uh, good uh, clips there. Appreciate that very much. I was enjoying watching the <laughs> play. <laughs> that was back a few years. Uh, and uh, we made a, um, we got together with uh, uh, a bunch of friends and hired a little hall and made a promotional um, video out of that because we were going to Japan and they wanted something real nice and quick, just a little thing to see what we were all about. And that's the video there. <laughs> Uh, thank you for that. Um, today I'm going to be talking about occult science and esoteric wisdom and occult science in, in particular. So that's a nice deep one for us all. <laughs> Hermes is always deep and Hermes is the freeing one uh, because hermetic wisdom is not based on religion. It's based on philosophy. It's science, pure, pure science. And what I'm going to be dealing with is the, um, the seven hermetic principles today. And that should be enough <laughs> for one, uh, one sitting. The seven hermetic principles. Uh, the principle of mentalism, the principle of correspondence, principle of cause and effect, the principle of gender, the principle of rhythm and um, the principle of vibration and polarity. Uh, so it's, it really is uh, deep but it's pure science and it's worth considering. These seven principles are what the occult science is all about. And um, if you've watched my video presentations, that is exactly what you've been, uh, that's exactly the uh, principles that we're dealing with. For instance, in my presentations, I'm showing that, um, that the universe is mind, mind over matter. So the universe is mental. And Hermes calls this mind Pymanda. And that's the, um, the divine Pymanda of uh, Hermes Trismegistus. This was uh, translated by Marsilio Ficino in the 1400s. The works, all of the works of Hermes. Uh, but Hermes um, was always around anyway, uh, even though the Corpus Hermeticum was translated for the first time in that particular time, uh, the Hermetic principles are um, underlying all, all of the sciences of all of the theologies and philosophies of the whole planet. It's all Hermetic. And this is what I'm showing. You see, <clears throat> the Hermetic system is a unified whole. It's holistic. <coughs> and at one stage in our um, so-called development, evolution, let's call it evolution because we've devolved and we've evolved and we're doing this all the time. So in our evolution, somewhere in there, something fragmented, something went wrong and we forgot this universal system, this universal philosophy. And it fragmented and then religions came along and basically uh, packaged certain opinions and sold them for God's word and got a bunch of adherents and harvested their energy and taxes in their particular little group, little clubs, you see. 
the Jehovah's Witnesses are a club. And so this sort of club mentality uh, and um, religious cultism whereby you uh, belong to a herd and the Bible does warn not to, belong, not to uh, go with the crowd. This has fragmented the beautiful hermetic wisdom but the hermetic wisdom is there underlying all the systems. So what I'm doing with my videos is syncretizing and uh, syncretism began with um, Marsilio, um, with Marsilio Ficino in the Renaissance days and Pico, his uh, student, Pico della Mirandola and um, these guys were uh, great students of Hermes and teachers of Hermes and so was Giordano Bruno and all of these Renaissance guys Francis Bacon, John Dee, etc. Now, they, they were teaching it, it because it is, it's always been there. But it was not until this time in the Renaissance times that they actually found original documents from Hermes. And the Arabs were responsible for bringing those documents over. I forget the name of the gentleman, but he uh, brought the documents and sold them to... Uh, the Medici family, De Medici, De Medici. This family was um, at the time putting popes on the throne very from their family stock, very powerful. And of course Machiavelli with this lot um, and his ideas about republics etc. He was uh, in support of what the uh, the Medici's were wanting to create a republic based on Hermes, and of course Giordano Bruno was um, went over to England and got into Queen Elizabeth the First's ear, and Queen Elizabeth the First was about to um, make Great Britain a Hermetic republic. But, uh, of course, the Vatican found out about this and uh, stopped it. You see, the religions are there to stop that knowledge because people will be free if they get the knowledge. <laughs> so they have to uh, debase and attack their enemy freedom and the true science of astrology and uh, the principles of Hermes, the principle of correspondence. There you go, that's the second one. So the first one was the, prin the principle of mentalism and through my, with my videos on astrotheology you've seen that this is scientifically true. It is scientifically true, the universe is 12. The space is represented by the number 12 the potentials, the 12 potentials. 12 is a number that fulfills the whole circle of conditions. Um, <clears throat> and 7 is the number which interacts with that number and that is the number of matter. So the universe being mental is the, is the, first, the first principle of Hermes. The second, the principle of correspondence. Well, that would be as above, so below. Now the Hermetists taught that man was the measure of the universe. <laughs> so if you want to know what the universe is about, you must know yourself. Man, know thyself. Because you are the measure of the universe. In fact, um, Firmicus Maternus, one of the great astrologers of history, declared in his, in his work, the um, Mathesius, in his work, the Mathesius, um, Firmicus Maternus says this, and this is mind-blowing information that I've shared with uh, 
well I will be sharing with you probably probably in the next couple of days I will be sharing my Prisca Theology Astrology video on YouTube and uh, I'm going to be talking about this great revelation of this um, astrologer 1600 years ago in which he says that the ancients had made a um, a birth chart of the universe and this birth chart was handed down to us by Hermes yep good old Mercurius Trismegistus keeps turning up everywhere Quetzalcoatl, Buddha Moses, Nebo Toph Thoth the thought and um, he declares that they gave us the birth chart of the universe and in that birth chart Aries is the midheaven Aries is the midheaven and Aries is in the head the midheaven this is the heaven the heart is the midgard the middle garden and the lower chakras are what was considered to be hell so this is heaven in Aries you see and Aries is the mid heaven now if you don't